Hello, I'm Professor Stephen Nesheba, and I'm here to uh, help you out a little bit with this set of ideas associated with factors that influence infrared uh, spectra. And to orient you a little bit, I've, I've just kind of drawn a, a, a couple of spectra here. And uh, the idea is that uh, here's a frequency axis, which we're given in this, uh, this frequency called nu bar, a wave number. And the way this is conventionally laid out is that we go from high frequency to low frequency. And uh, also on the vertical axis here, uh, it's, uh, it's percent transmission. So in other words, uh, if I have a, a molecule that's not absorbing any light, that means it would be 100% transmission. And so these two peaks mean that at this wave number and at this wave number, the molecule is absorbing. And uh, another few uh, 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 things before we, we get into the, the, these criteria is that a strong absorber would mean that this peak goes way down because it absorbs you know, uh, more. That is to say, uh, you know, eventually if that reached the bottom, that would mean that no light is transmitted. Um, so that must be a very strong absorber. So again, absorption strength has to do with the uh, the size of that, that, that inverted peak and the, and the position has to do with, with where we are uh, on this, this axis. So here are the rules. Um, the line strength rule, which determines how, how far down that goes, is very simple. It just says the, uh, the larger the difference in electronegativity between two atoms that are bonded, um, if that difference is really large, then the line is stronger. Okay. And, uh, and then we have another rule which has to do with the position, again. And uh, that rule, the line position rule, says uh, there's two considerations, actually. A stronger bond would produce a higher frequency, which would be to the left here, uh, absorber. Or lighter masses uh, tend to produce absorption at, at, at higher frequencies. Okay, so stronger bond or lighter mass produce uh, or cor correspond to higher new bond, higher wave numbers. So let's just take a couple of examples here. Uh, this is the one we're looking at. Uh, I see two peaks here. This one is a stronger absorber. This one's a weaker absorber. And let's suppose we know that one of those was carbon double bonded to oxygen, and the other one was carbon double bonded to uh, sulfur. And let's just look at the line strength rule. Um, if you look up the electronegativities of carbon, oxygen, and sulfur, you find that this has a, a much bigger difference in electronegativity between carbon and oxygen. This carbon and sulfur have a very small difference in electronegativity. So we would expect that the stronger absorber would, would be this one, okay? Um, that is to say, this stronger absorber would correspond to um, carbon double bonded to oxygen. So we're kind of thinking that belongs there, but let's just check the other rule. The line position rule says that uh, stronger bonds, mm, can't really tell because they're both double bonds, but how about this criterion? A lighter mass produces a higher wave number. Well, the carbons are the same, but look, uh, we have oxygen here and sulfur here. Oxygen is much lighter than sulfur, so that would argue for this carbon double bond oxygen to be off to the left. So both of these criteria are arguing that this really is the carbon double bond oxygen, and that really is the uh, carbon double bond sulfur peak, both of those rules. Let's have a look at, at this other spectrum uh, I put up here. So uh, now what we say we know about this is that one of these peaks is carbon single bonded to oxygen, and the other one is carbon single bonded to hydrogen. Okay, let's, let's do our line strength rule again. Well, I happen to know that there's a big electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen. Hardly any between, sorry, carbon and oxygen. Hardly any electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen. So uh, this one now looks like it belongs to that peak because that's the stronger absorber. Okay, let's see how that checks out with the line position rule. Stronger bond, um, no, we have the same bond strength here, but we do have a, a, a lighter mass, and, uh, and so it's a similar case here. I've got a lighter mass here because that's hydrogen. That's going to argue 
uh, for hydrogen, the CH belonging to here, which means that the CO must be here. So both of those considerations point to the same uh, 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 conclusion, that that peak must correspond to, to CO, and this peak must correspond to, to CH. Okay.